Well, welcome. Welcome to Dying Out Loud on the Line. It's Tuesday, June 27, 2023, the year of our Lord. I love saying that. I don't know why. Um, welcome back. We're glad you're here. Um, it's been a day. Um, I'm going to talk, share a couple minutes about what's going on in my life, and then I'm going to bring our guest on. Um, by the way, uh, it is a call-in show. We want to hear from you. It's The number is 720-619-2288. And uh, if you're online, there's a link to call in on the interweb. Uh, call in. We'll talk about anything you want to talk about. Death, dying, well, those are the fun subjects. Um, faith deconstruction, if you're a theist and you have a good case for God, we want to hear about it. Because we're we're going to be nice. We'll talk to you about it, and we'll see um, who's got the better argument, maybe. But I am Dave Warnock, and I am dying out loud. And um, if you don't know what that means, it means I have ALS. I've had it for, well, I've been diagnosed for a little over four years. I've probably had it for over five now. And um, so that means that certain things in my life are getting harder to do because it's a motor neuron disease where the muscles basically quit getting signals from the nerves and they atrophy and they get weak and I can't do things I could normally do. That's why you see me um, sitting in a chair leaning back because my neck muscles neck muscles are getting weak and my head gets heavy because I have a big head, I guess. That's a, a joke that needed to be said, obviously. Um, but today um, we had installed a, um, a stair chair what's it called a stair lift yeah a stair lift um if you if you don't know what that is it's what they put in old people's homes because they can't climb the stairs anymore or put in people with als so it's a um it's a win and it's a loss um did i hear someone sorry um it's a win and it's a loss because climbing stairs is getting more and more difficult and so it allows me to sit in a chair push a button and hold it down and it, the the stair the, uh, the chair goes up the stairs and I get off at the top where our bedroom is the loss is that it's a loss it's a loss in that um it's one of those things that kind of signals that you're losing stuff it's a very real um shining light that this is this is happening I sit and look, it's 10 feet away from me. I'm looking at it right now, the stairs out from my office here. And um, it's the first thing you see when you open the front door. So it's this constant reminder of the loss that ALS is. And it's just, it, it's a um, it's a blessing to use a, a nice spiritual term, but it's a fucking curse because it just reminds me of the losses that are coming. So that's just the reality of my life. And I want to always... As I've told you on this show, we're going to we're going to keep it real. I get messages from people <clears throat> almost daily who are struggling with real life issues and I'm not going to pretend that I'm not just because I look like I'm okay if you if if you just see me talking, but I'm going to always try to keep it as real as possible and you know, if you're someone that's struggling with real life issues and I don't want you to think that well Everyone else has it all together because we don't. In fact, none of us do. We're all struggling with something or other. We just, some of us are better at pretending that we're not. Um, so that's that. And um, not to be a downer, and it's not going to be about that, but it's going to be about just how do we, how do we adjust to the things in our lives that are hard and that are uh, difficult. But our guest, if you're down in the dumps now after all that, our guest tonight is going to brighten things up because she is a breath of fresh air, and I love her to death. And I want you to welcome our guest tonight, Apostasy. Hi, Dave. Hey, girl. How you Hi. doing? Oh, I'm good. I just want to say I love you so much, too. <laughs> oh, you're a sweetheart. I feel like I should call you Apostasy because your name is Stacy. <laughs> when, when I say Apostasy, it doesn't sound right. I don't know. But I know that's how you say it, right? <laughs> apostasy. Yeah. Apostasy, you're playing on your name yeah. and you're an apostate, a filthy apostate who, who's so mad at God and so angry all the time. Yes, I'm very angry. All I was the time. joking. I, if those of you that I'm, I'm sure more, a lot, most of you have seen 
Stacy on various shows and on our own show, which is called. Uh, well, my it's podcast with my mom. Yeah. The, uh, the Stacy's mom podcast. Yeah. Stacy's mom podcast. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy's mom has got it going on. Um, she does. So if you've seen Stacy online, you, you see how bright and cheerful and adorable she is. And I, I was joking backstage. I said, yeah, I've just, I've heard you're the angriest atheist on the internet. She goes, <laughs> I am? Who said that? <laughs> Aw. Totally joking. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You may be the nicest one online, honestly, because you're just this Aww. sweet, sweet mom who just doesn't believe in God anymore. And I'm going to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> and I also joke oh with gosh. you that you deconverted on, on a Tuesday and had a, had a show on a Wednesday. You know, you just yeah. you just jumped right into the fray. I love that about you. You, you yep. just said, I'm I- going to talk about this stuff. What, I don't what keep anything to, to myself. An what caused you to decide, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to become an activist here? Um well, I did not set out to do that, but you know you know my sister-in-law who's amazing, ex-Christian yeah. Aaron. Mm-hmm. And um I told this story when I was on with Matt uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't say who my sister-in-law was, but my sister-in-law is ex-Christian Aaron. And um, she is an activist. And Mm -hmm. when I found out that she deconverted, which had no clue, because we used to go to church together every week. And she kind of just quietly deconverted. And I came across her content on a Seth Andrews interview, which just blew my mind. And so so I texted her, and um said you're not going to believe this i'm an atheist now (laughs) and she really i was the last person she would have ever expected to get that Mm -hmm. text message from so when she introduced me on her twitter just saying my sister-in-law contacted me um it was neil the 604 atheist who said hey i do uh de i know um i do deconversion stories i'd love to have hear your story and just have you on. And I said, okay, that would be really cool. Cause I just feel like I could just tell my story because I'm really just excited about this change in, in my life. And so he um, had me on. And then from there, I got invited on a couple other people's channels and I really enjoyed just telling my story. And right after that happened our church started calling me and my husband and our family out for deconverting and publicly shaming us and that actually got me even more angry about the whole just yeah i knew what? you were angry i knew i knew there was, was anger bubbling under the surface I, so. yeah that was the anger part and i was <laughs> like okay i'm just gonna keep doing this because you don't what like it and i'm free by doing that they, they thought they would what was their motive? I mean, what was the purpose of that? To try to get you guys to come back or to save That's face to them or what? Huh? Their motive what? was to bring us back, but how'd that work um, out? Yeah. Oh, well, as you can tell, you are. we're back in the church <laughs> by my name. Well, I'm no I've longer an apostate. Work. I've, no. I've seen Channing and I mean, I've experienced it myself. It, it doesn't, it doesn't have the intended effect. Uh, not at all. I think that, yeah, I don't understand it, honestly. Never have. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So that that kind of just lit that fire in me and just like, screw you. <laughs> like, I'm free to just do what I want and you mm-hmm. don't have any control over me. And I just kept sharing it, my story on online and um, getting bolder and bolder. And that's kind of what happened and I started meeting amazing people like yourself (laughs) and um, getting asked to just do more shows. And I loved it because I started just meeting the nicest people. And Mm -hmm. when all of the people in my life were kind of just being like, okay, well, you're no longer a Christian. See ya. I was like, well, that's fine because now I have this community that I'm getting to know online and I don't need people like that who are just gonna 
abandoned me essentially. And That's a good point. I want to come back yeah. to that. I'm going to take a call, but I want to talk sure. more about the community aspect and the um, relationship with your mom. I messaged her earlier or last week to call in tonight and to, if she will. So maybe Stacy, we'll hear from Stacy's mom tonight. That would be fun. But um, yeah, I want to talk more about that uh, component, the, the community and the uh, just your desire to jump right in and not hide or not wait or not, you know, just, just throw it out there, you know, cause a lot of people yeah. are afraid to do that because of what they're going to yeah. lose. So yeah. we'll come back to that. We've got a call okay. from miles in the UK. He, him, let me see. Um, hello, miles. Are you, are you there? Hello. Uh, hey miles, you're on with, uh, Stacy and Dave, you're on the, on the line. Oh, wait. Th thanks. Um, just to let you know, I am uh, deaf. Um, I do wear hearing aids, so I can hear you, but you have to speak a bit loud and a bit clearly for me, if that's all right. Absolutely. We'll, we'll try to do yes. everything we can. If, you, if we say something you can't hear, just ask us to repeat it, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Um, but yeah, my uh, topic today, um, I literally got the notification for this show half an hour ago of like, oh, I have to call in. Um, my, my question is, does religion supposedly cure the fear of death or does it create the fear of death? And should Ooh. we be afraid of death? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, that is. I, I guess... Before we respond, what do you think, Miles, uh, uh, in that regard? What I, do you think the answer to that is? I think um, that religion was created uh, out of partly death anxiety, and it set out to try and cure and um, fix the uh, fear of death. However, I think with the invention of hell, and all that stuff, telling children that if they're bad, they go to hell, but if they're good, they go to heaven. I think that's created more death anxiety. Um, so I don't think religion has fixed this at all. Mm. Yeah. Stacey, what do you think? What's your reaction to that question initially? Um, yeah, well, I think when I was in religion, I wasn't afraid of dying because I felt like I was assured that I was going to go to heaven. I was afraid of possibly going to hell. Um, but now that I'm not in religion, I'm also not afraid of dying. So mm -hmm. I, I could see why um, maybe like thousands and thousands of years ago before, yeah, when religion might have been created, that it that was to cure the fear of dying. Um, but for me, I, I, I don't have any fear around the actual dying and, and what's going to happen. Um, I know I had this conversation with my mom actually just not too long ago. It's more the fear of how you might die. Like hopefully it's just peaceful um, and not in a, in a traumatic way. I think that would be more of what I would be afraid of more than the actual being dead part, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that completely makes sense. I think, um, you know, I think we all know the Mark Twain quote, um, you know, I was dead for billions of years before I was born and it didn't even cause the slightest inconvenience. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, I, I don't fear uh, like both of you, death itself like i'm i accept the fact that when i when i'm dead i just won't exist anymore but um that bit about actually dying about uh dying in a traumatic way um i think that causes a lot of fear in people um but but i also think people are, are naturally afraid of nothing um, not existing. I think that creates fear in people. Yeah, I think there's, 
for me, when I think about mine or in general death, but mine, because it's something that's in front of me now, um, it's not the, uh, as Stacy said, it's not the actual process of dying because if we think about that, however it occurs, it's just going to sleep and not waking up. It's becoming unconscious yeah. and not becoming conscious again. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself is nothing to be afraid of because there's the experience uh, is not that traumatic, honestly. It's, yeah. it's how, it's what leads up to that. And then there's, the, for me, it's serious FOMO, fear of missing out. I, yeah. I, do, I enjoy all that life entails, not all that life entails, but there's so much of life that is um, wonderful and spectacular, and I love it. And so I don't want to miss any of that. It's just like I, I want it to keep going. I don't want to miss the party. So mm -hmm. that's more of what I deal with than the actual dying part. When I think of the actual dying part, and I've said this many times, so forgive me if you get sick of hearing this, it's the dying part is harder on those around us than it is on the person who dies. It's harder on the yeah. ones who love us. It's harder on the people that are left behind, if you will. Um, <clears throat> as far as to your question, I think for me, what I've seen is that, and what I believe re religion, a big reason re religion became prominent as men as mankind evolved is to is to create stories for what happens after we die because we don't know what happens after we die so we create stories of an afterlife to make that feel better for us to make it okay to pass away so that we don't feel like that's the end we don't want it to end so we create a story that it never ends that's what i think mm -hmm. religion is with death Hmm. Yeah, and I, I mean, for people who believe that, is that necessarily a good thing or a bad thing? Well, that's that's a good question, and I've wrestled with that a lot myself. My mom, for instance, is ninety, turning ninety in a couple of weeks. We're having a big party for, her. so I'm going out there to the, my family, all the evangelical Christian family members, and. <laughs> And supporting her in that, I'm, 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 I'm bracing myself for all of that. You're a good son. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to be. But she's just all about, you know, going to heaven and re being reunited with her husband that she was with for 50 years because he died a few years ago, my stepdad. And and so she's all about that and just, just, just can't wait. Um, and so I don't want to blow that up i don't want to go to mom and just pound her and say mom come on this is not real you know that's not going to happen you're never going to see him again deal with it there's <laughs> I, I would take no pleasure in in popping her bubble although i firmly believe that's not going to happen i don't see mm -hmm. any evidence of some kind of afterlife being plausible in a physiological sense or in any way biologically any way you want to any way you want to wrap it but um, slightly, sorry. Go ahead. A slightly personal question. Uh, you, you know, you said she's an evangelical Christian, and you know, with your situation with with ALS, um, does she worry about you and your atheism and how that's gonna impact? So sorry if that's a personal question. No, no, very, very much so. She's been very distressed about my. Uh, departure from the faith and has made several attempts to, I mean, I'll get a text, you know, it hasn't happened in a while, but a few years ago, I got a, for instance, an example would be, she would send me a text and say, Dave, would you please watch God's not dead? Uh, it would mean a lot for me. It would mean a lot to me if you would just watch the movie. <laughs> I, I just said, I can't mom. I can't, I can't, I, I'm not going to, mm -hmm. it, I'm sorry. Um, I don't feel obligated to do things for people, even my mom, mm -hmm. because she wants me to come back to God. God, excuse me. Yeah. So yes, to answer your question, Miles, she's very concerned about my position in life. I've told her, I said, if this God that you believe in is a just God and a loving God, 
do you really think he's going to send your son to hell because <laughs> I asked too many questions? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> um, so but yeah. she's concerned. <laughs> My family's concerned. They don't like it. Um, I'm clearly the black sheep in the group, and, you know, they're all worried about Atheist Dave, I hope, I mean, the actual birthday party is actually in the fellowship hall of my brother's church. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So um, I may walk in there. The atheist walks in and the church explodes. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, another part that I've seen, Miles, since I've been doing Dying Out Loud stuff, I've seen that Christians seem to be a little more afraid of death than the atheists are. Mm-hmm. And and that doesn't make Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't understand that. Absolutely. Um, you know, I grew up in an atheist family. I'm from England. Um uh which is funny because England is a uh, technically a religious state. However, we're more religiously moderate than uh the United States, which is technically a secular state, um, which right. is slightly weird. Yeah. But um I I just sort of grew up, um, never really had a fear. I, I turned 18 uh, last week, woohoo. Um, and I, I'm studying philosophy and politics at university um, yeah. in, in September. And I, I love it, and I often think about uh, these kind of questions. I've never been afraid of death. Um, no one in my family, as far as I know, have been a, a, are afraid of death. And I just think it's interesting how religion is like, oh, there'll be an afterlife, you'll either go to a good afterlife or a bad afterlife. Right. To me, that's always, to me, that's always created more fear than just acceptance. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I, I've... I've... I've been puzzled by that, but the more I've talked to Christians in my, or, or even about Christians, the more I've realized that the, possibly the reason they fear it so much is that Christianity demonizes death so much and doesn't treat it mm -hmm. as a natural result of living, which is what it is. Mm -hmm. They treat it, in fact, there's a scripture that says that death is the final enemy that shall be defeated, as though it's something that we have to defeat. Hmm. When in reality, death is simply the natural result of living. And um, if we can begin to look at it that way and not as some bad boogie thing that we have to avoid, it, it becomes less of a thing to fear and less mysterious, and we can just embrace it and recognize, you know what, we're all going to die. Now, mm -hmm. what, what can we do about living? And the other thing that I think is, um, I wanted to, follow up on you asked follow up question do you think it's wrong or bad for people to believe in an afterlife if it's not true um, one thing I think it can do is cause people to minimize the one life we do know we have this one yeah and if they're looking forward to an afterlife if they treat this life as a warm-up and, and a, and a preseason game then by definition, you're gonna you're gonna minimize the quality of the one life we do have, and I think that can hurt us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, partly why I'm okay with death as a concept is because you know whether or not I'm right or wrong at all about religion. Um, you know, I'm an atheist always, always have been. But whether or not I'm right or wrong. What I know for sure is that I'm here right now, and I should exactly. live life to the fullest. Yeah. And I wanted to, uh, yeah. I, I just uh, heard you uh, before talking about how religion sort of paints death as an enemy to defeat. I actually think that's, one of, that's part of a fundamental problem with religion, especially Christ the religions that we have now, Christianity, Islam, and yeah, is that um, they don't, they don't accept that humans are humans. Like, you know, I, I was watching Stephen Fry uh, a while ago. He was talking about his atheism, and he said that if he died and he was the Greek gods, 
he would be okay because at least the Greek gods didn't pretend that humans were humans. And, yeah. um, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stephen Fry's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's one of your best over there across the pond. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen Fry, Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens. Um, He's produced some good ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ricky Gervais, yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah, Ricky good. Gervais is English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Miles, that's that's good stuff, man. I appreciate the question. I appreciate the call. It's always thank you. Always good to tackle these conversations, these mm -hmm. questions about yeah. death. The more we talk about it, the less mysterious and scary it is. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling, Miles. You take care, bro. You too. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Miles. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. I don't know Good about time. you when mm -hmm. you deconverted, but I sure felt like so much of my life felt, I mean, obviously I did an, a lot of amazing things. Like I got married and I had kids and those are all wonderful parts of life. But did you ever feel like you, like your life really started to begin once you deconverted? Like I saw things in such a new way and I felt like I got a second chance at life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, sort of. I, I mean, I did feel like it was it was uh, just an absolute breath of fresh air to look at life mm -hmm. through the lens of this reality and logic and, and to put superstition aside. One of the challenging yeah. things for me was, though, that I had lived a whole lot more life than you did <laughs> as a believer. And, uh, and, and you yeah. know, I had... You know, three and a half decades invested into that. And um, so for me, for me to look at say, wow, it's a new day. Well, shit, I'm 60, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, I was about, yeah. I was about 55 or 56 when I deconstructed. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot more yeah. water behind me that, that I had to look back and say, wow, that was a waste, <clears throat> you know, right. in a lot of ways it was, but I've learned not to, not to dwell in regret because that's that's just not helpful at all. Um, no, I was, I was doing the best I could, but yeah. To to answer your question, it was like, yeah, this is this is a new life. This is totally. this is it. This is how it's supposed to be. It felt like to me, like if that felt like the true born again experience that yeah. you know the 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 church talks about being born again. That felt like my born again yeah. experience. Yeah, you were really born again then. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, I want to remind everyone that there are several ways that can support us. And patreon.com slash call the line is an obvious and good one. So we appreciate your support there. Um, the super chats, as you know, if you watch any of these shows, anything above $5 will be read on the air at the end of the show by Stacy and myself. We'll take turns. So if you have questions or comments or anything like that that you want to get in and you don't want to call in, we'd love for you to call. But if you want to do it in the super chat, then we'll devote that time to that. Um, so we've, I want to give us the rundown of the shows coming up. And by the way, um, hopefully you caught the um, mega host super fundraiser for Recovering from Religion last Saturday. Stacy, you were there. I know I saw you in the chat, but was that not amazing? I was. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. Yes. It was like I was five hours. On a high. Yeah. And um, oh. the goal was to raise twenty five thousand. Seven hours, Dave. Seven, Seven hours. hours. I'm sorry. Jimmy did three hours two hours of his own that I keep ignoring. No, 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 no. no. That's without my two hours the night prior. We started at three and we didn't get done till well past ten. <laughs> I'm just saying. I gotta say, Jimmy. Jimmy was just whipping the crowd into a frenzy. Whenever oh he gosh. was, whenever he was plugging it, man, the the uh, oh. the donations were were popping. And um, yeah. but we we want to keep that going. So here's the deal: we're at a little over forty thousand now, right, Stacy? Yeah, the, I think it's at. When I checked this afternoon, it was just under forty. Because I don't I, think I've we've broken forty track. yet. Yeah, Not I think 40. it's just we under. Push, we need mm -hmm. to get over forty. And the goal was 25,000. Recover from Religion, if y'all don't know, is one of the best organizations I've ever seen. I've been familiar with it for, for years now. I refer people to it over and over again. Um, I know Daryl and Gail 
personally, they're dear friends of mine. They run that nonprofit on a on a shoestring budget. They are lean and mean, and they they don't waste money. And um, so this this these contributions, these these donations, go a long way toward helping people navigate their life post religion and recover from religious religious trauma, deal with loss of community, all these things that really are affecting people in real ways in their life. This mm-hmm. this organization helps folks in in those ways more than any other that I'm aware of. So we want to keep these donations going. If you haven't had a chance to give, um, we're trying to get to 40. I think we'd like to get to, well, as, long, as much 40. as we can. We're going to keep it open the rest of the month. But um, if we get to 44,000, there's, there's a, a buzz going that Matt Dillahunty will put a tattoo, will get tattooed a picture of Seth Andrews' stick drawing of his cat. And if you Which don't know is what so that is, awesome. <laughs> don't know if you don't know what that is. Watch the show back. Um, Seth is an aspiring artist. Perfect. There it is. There it is. That's Seth it. Is, is an aspiring artist, and I think we can all agree that is some amazing shit right there. And I, I love, love how he, he spells cat in in a unique way. But that mm-hmm. drawing will become a tattoo on Matt Dillahunty if we get to forty four thousand. And I think he means it. And I think Seth's quite disturbed about this, but. Oh, That's he means it. If anything, he's worried it won't happen. I think he's going to be depressed <laughs> he really if he doesn't get to get it tattooed on him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He wants uh, that thing. Don't let him down. Uh, we we need that to happen. We we just really do need that to happen. So it's been um, a shit year. Would y'all get get this get this for me? Get this for yeah. for the for my joy. <laughs> Jimmy wants to see that tattoo on Matt. So uh, let's let's just say we're doing it for Jimmy. Thank you. Um, yes. And so uh, please consider that. Um, I wanted to put put that in tonight. Tomorrow night, we've got the hang up with Matt Dillahunty and Dr. Ben. And then on Thursday night, we've got a uh, transatlantic call-in show with Katie and I'm not sure who. Um, and then Sunday is the Sunday show. Monday is Skep Talk. And next Tuesday, I will be off. I'm traveling. Well, I, I'm recovering from my time in Texas, so uh, that's the Fourth of July next week. So I'm gonna, we won't, I won't be here. Uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna have in place of me, but it'll be spectacular. Um, lines are open. We want to hear from you. Um, what's that number again? Seven two zero six one nine two two eight eight seven two zero six one nine two two eight eight. And if you're calling from somewhere outside of the country, or for some reason you want to call from a PC, like you have really great audio, there is a web link in the description. <laughs> Thank yourself, you, Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, yeah, Jimmy, <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> we have got a special caller on the line. I wanna, I want to um, take this call and. We're going to talk to D. She, her in uh-huh. Canada. Hello, D. You're on with Stacy and Dave on the line. Hi there. Hey, <laughs> Stacy. Hey, you know this Stacey. person? Uh-huh. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's got it going on. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> hey, D, I have one question for you. Do you have it going on, really? Well, that's yes, she does. Just hear. say what yes. To say to that? Uh, I'd like to cut in here. Go ahead, Jimmy. This is Jimmy, Jimmy Snow to say, I know D and Stacy's mom <laughs> has definitely got it going on. <laughs> oh my God. I've heard that. Well, I've heard that about you, D. And so I just wanted to hear you, you know, just own it, girl. Just own it. Just say, All right, I'm owning it. I'm owning just it. Say, yes. I'm a badass. I got it going on. <laughs> I am a badass, actually. I kind of like like to embarrass my daughter sometimes. She's got a couple of friends that are in the community, especially one, and he likes to post some pretty cheeky things, and I'll jump right in. <laughs> I'm Gary. Oh, I are you listening? I love it. I, I love it. Does uh, she embarrass you, Stacey? Yeah. In a really great way. I'm not embarrassed, but I'll just be like, oh, my God, I can't believe she just said that. <laughs> I can't believe they spelled Stacy's mom wrong. 
fix that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Come on. <laughs> it matches the song. <laughs> it matches the song. Oh, Stacey's funny. mom yeah. has got it going yeah, on. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's all good. Okay. Yeah. So on a more serious note, when um, mm-hmm. Dave made the comment for me to call in, it was kind of on a, a post that Stacy had made about family and uh, you quoted that scripture, Stace, you remember? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that yeah. Jesus and, didn't come to bring yeah. peace, but a sword mm-hmm. and he put families against that. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I um, uh, kind of made a comment. I mean, Dave, you made a comment that you had lived, you were, you'd lived through that and whatever. And I said, yeah, I'm kind of living through it now. And you said, okay, well, why don't you call in next week when Stacy's on? And I said, okay, I would. And, uh, just thinking about it. I mean, we, we can, you know, we, we're really grateful that we have the community that we have now and gosh, oh, it's, it's hard, but, um, the first real painful loss that we suffered, um, together, Stacy and I is, uh, her brother. Um, we we're still confused. We're conflicted. We don't understand that he, has never, he's, I guess he considered himself a believer, but I think he's one of those people that kind of just thought, I'll go live like hell and do what I want to do. And at the very end, I'll just slip in on somebody's coattails. That's basically mm-hmm. how it is. Like, uh, you know, that whole, um, as long as I believe, I know I'm getting in. Oh, yeah. And I really think he really felt, I think he felt as long as Stacy and I believed that there was hope. And by Stacy and I both deconverting, um, I mean, I was a closet deconvert for a really long time. And if anybody's heard my story, I was able to finally just come clean and be like, I have not believed for a very long time. I was very alone in the atheist closet. I was mm. anxious and, and just, oh, I, it was a really hard place to be. And when Stacy came out, it was just such a, a release for me and I was oh my god it was amazing um and I remember having a couple of conversations with my son since then he's like well why didn't you talk to me well the kid never sat still for five minutes for me to have a conversation like that with him he was always just on the go leaving and he didn't really spend a lot of time with us as a family he was just always going somewhere and there was never an opportunity to have that conversation with him but now now, it's not just him. Um, my mother was living here in the same town as Stacy and I during our whole deconstruction. And she, her attitude was, well, I love you. She's, she's fundamentalist, evangelical. You've heard Stacy mention her in a lot of her interviews, how mm-hmm. I wasn't the one who ever forced this on her. A lot of the, all the craziness came from my mother, which is is the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, And as long as my mom was here in town and she needed uh, anything, she only had Stacy and I, Stacy and I are the only ones in the family who still, and my nephew, we're the only ones who still talk to my mom for various reasons, but really it's her religion. My brother and my sister tapped out years ago. They're just like, we're done. We're out because they have been, Converts for a really long time. They just had nothing to do with the religion. Mm-hmm. So Stacy and I were the only ones who had anything to do with her. And so she basically, it was by default. Well, I love you no matter what. It doesn't matter. Well, recently she moved away from us and she doesn't need us anymore. And she was only a couple of weeks gone and she sent me a Jack Hibbs video. Jack Hibbs speaking on the end times. I was like, I don't know who that is. Jack Hibbs. Jack Jack Hibbs is a Calvary Chapel uh, pastor, oh, and he okay. he aligns himself with that young guy who is uh, like um, Charlie Kirk. If you're oh, familiar Jesus. with Charlie Kirk, yeah. yeah. So he does yeah. a lot of sermons Talking with Charlie Mary. Kirk. Oh Jesus, yeah. yeah. And Stacy so, describes him. She said to me, "He's a Christian nationalist," and I'm like, "It doesn't surprise me at all." All his, all his 
sermons are on like this is it this is the end times look to the sky when you see these things happening the same thing we've been hearing our entire effing lives 35 okay? years like, i heard that every, i mean my god jesus is christmas, late yeah every christmas is our last christmas this was it we yeah. get these written in our christmas cards this is it this is our last christmas every christmas i lived in fear like oh mm. my god like it was my my entire childhood was traumatic because this was our last Christmas. This is our last this. This is our last that. This is our last trip to Disneyland. But we never went as a kid. This was as an adult. Um, wow. Everything was the last this. I have a recipe book. Every, I open it up to this day. My mom wrote out a waffle recipe. Jesus is coming next week, but make long term goals. It's like what the fuck? What? Like, I can't do it. I can't do anything where there's something. My mom's handwriting is on something, and it's like, this is it. This is it. And I'm like, oh, wow. my God, I want to just burn everything. Was that, were you so, raised in, what, what was the brand you were raised up in as far as? Okay, per, so we were raised kind of in, thing. we very proudly wore the label non-denominational, but it was Pentecostal. Okay. If we Speaking couldn't find a non-denominational. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Everything. Oh, Rolling on the yeah. floors, barking like dogs, snorting like pigs, wow. laughing uncontrollably. Holy laughter. People laughter. getting yep. so-called miracles with gold showing up in their teeth. You name it. We did it. We we never saw it. We just, oh my no. God. Okay, no, so we anyway. never did. Uh, no, we never no. did, but we always claimed to believe it and claimed it could happen anytime. And yes. yeah, it, it's just yes. mind numbing. And everybody... Did you did you ever hear the tape recording of somebody up north recording that the Holy Spirit wind rolling through the church and it's like, oh my God, okay, anyway, it was probably yeah. just wind. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my mom sent this Jack Hibbs video and I was like, oh my fucking God, are you kidding me? Look at Stacy, look what she sent me, and Stacy goes, yeah, because she's a safe distance away now and she doesn't need us to do anything. Oh. So I'm like, okay, no, no, no. So I found a Seth Andrews interview where he's interviewing um, Dan Barker, uh, back, a former. Okay, there you go, Stacey. Dan Barker, because my memory. Oh, okay. I told you in our introductory video, Stacey's my memory. Okay, so <laughs> I sent you this. I said, okay, I'll watch this if you watch this, and she's like, okay, I'll watch it. So That's she watched enough. it. We tried to watch. Stacey and I seriously tried to watch Jack Hibbs, and we both wanted to vomit. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. But anyway, 30 minutes later, she messages me and I get this text message that's like five inches long and it says, okay, I watched it and I just feel so sad for you and Stacey. I'm going to pray that you have an experience. And okay, instantly I'm like, I, I can have an experience at a concert. I can have an experience in bed, like whatever. So... Yeah. Then, okay, this is what did it for me, okay? This is what did it for me, guys. My mom, the very first time I ever heard this story, I want you to picture this. I'm sitting in a church service, surrounded by people, and this is the first time I hear my mom's so-called testimony. And I'm sorry if I break down. I'm going to try not to, but listen. Her testimony, she gets up to give her testimony, and she tells her testimony where she was suicidal one day and I was five and my little sister was two and she decides one day she can't live. So she takes me and my little sister and straps us in the back seat of a car and puts us in her lap belts and she decides she's going to drive us all into the ocean and kill all of us. Mm. And all of a sudden she hears the voice of God say, you can do that to yourself, but you can't do that to those kids. So she says to me, if there wasn't a God, you wouldn't be alive. And your brother never would have been born because I'm seven mm -hmm. years older than my brother. Now, that's her trump card every fucking time she wants to say there's a God. And I lost it. I said, do you want to know something? I am sick and tired of you using that as your proof of God. How about you just admit you had a moment of lucidity mm -hmm. instead of trying to say that that's when there's a fucking God. I'm tired of this. I'm not listening to this anymore. I need a break. This is not permanent, Mom. I love you still, 
but I need a break. I don't want any communication with you for a while. I can't do this anymore because that, mm-hmm. because you just use it every, I never know when it's coming. I said, you can't use that as a story, as your reason that there's a God. That's not a reason to me. No, it's an anecdotal so that, experience that she, that she, you really can't argue with it. You can't say to her, no, that didn't happen. Uh, she'll just say, yes, it exactly. did happen. Exactly. And so you go around in exactly. circles and she knows that. Exactly. And, and so exactly. when Christians use anecdotes as proof, they know that you can't really argue with them about it because you didn't hear the voice of God. Yes, I did. You can't tell me I didn't. No. Well, where do you go yeah. with that? Yeah. And meanwhile, I have to relive this thing and I don't remember it, but you know what? I can see it as clear as day in my mind because she has painted this word picture for me with my, that's, my five-year-old self abusive. and my two-year-old little sister sitting in yeah, the back seat of this fucking car. That's that I could have been driven to, into the ocean. Yeah. That's abuse for her to yeah. tell you that story as though you owe her your life. Or you owe God your yeah. life. Because just because she chose not to drive into the water. Are you serious? So yeah, yeah. that's, um, that's, that's <laughs> really, that's really child abuse. I mean, a spiritual that's abuse, emotional up. abuse. That's messed up. Yeah. That's messed yeah. up. So that so, was the day after yeah. that, Stacey, and I knew what Stacy was referring to, like, and that's, uh, okay. So that's my yeah. story. So yeah, she. The other your now the the um Stacy's brother, I didn't catch that. Yeah. Are you guys estranged from him because of faith too? Yeah, right now we are at his choice. He knows we're here. He knows we love him. He's just always angry about something, and we yeah. can't figure it out because now because he has opened up to one close friend and said, "Well, how would you feel if all of a sudden you felt one way your entire life, and all of a sudden your mother and sister come to you and say?" You were right. And, and, and the friend said, I'd be thrilled. Mm. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. How does that make you feel, Stacey? Um, it's in a like way. A Sorry. Yeah, it's just my brother, he's a bit complicated. So in a way, it's, it's sad because... Um, he doesn't live here. He lives in Thailand. So I haven't seen him in four years. Um, but I'm just, it, it hurts because he knows that I've always been there for him and I'm not, You've I haven't never changed. Made him feel guilty. And no, never. I never, never did. Um, and I started deconstructing, um, without realizing it and, and was coming to him and, and, telling him, hey, did you know that the churches we were going to, these Pentecostal churches, they were actually wrong? And he's like, well, yeah, that's why I stopped going. And I was like, yeah, I'm just realizing this. And I still continued going to like church, but I found a different church. And I was feeling a lot closer to him because I was opening up. So um, I thought that he would be excited to know that, hey, I've left completely and we can actually have these really open conversations because I thought we would finally be able to just relate to one another. So mm-hmm. for him to just turn and be so angry, all of a sudden it threw me through for a loop. I was so confused as to where this anger came from. Cause I felt like at one point we were connecting and yeah, I feel like yeah, he was maybe just, yeah, yeah. People who, who like to say that, you know, I'm, how many times? How many people have you? How many times have you ever heard this? Well, I don't. I'm done with church and religion. I just want to follow Jesus. And yeah, I just oh, that, always that's my mom. Yeah, I just always mm-hmm. point out to them that Jesus wasn't a nice guy. What he talked about mm-hmm. love, you know. The, and and I'll I'll quote that scripture that all this we're talking about here that he clearly says, "I came to separate families. I came to bring a sword." I came to divide. Yeah. I came to cause distress and unrest mm-hmm. all because of me. And and if you don't choose to worship me, you're going to be cut off from your. That's not a nice guy. That's not a nice guy. No. And it and people that, don't realize how awful that ideology is until you've seen it lived out in real life. Yeah. And yeah, that verse right. really scared me when I was a Christian because my mom mm-hmm. and I are so close. And it scared me because I really thought, I don't want us to ever not be close. I don't want that to happen in our relationship. But I was, 
I knew that I had to put Jesus first. So I was actually really afraid that if it came down to it. I remember when you like, were scared of that. I really mm. was afraid, but, and then I felt guilty because it's like, well, I would have to put Jesus first, but I really don't want to have like, cause it says like, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll put families against each other. And I was like, well, would yeah. I have to like come between my, like me and my mom would be against each other? Like, how would that work? What would happen? So it, it did scare me. So I'm glad that that didn't happen. <laughs> cause. Well, I love how close you guys are. You can tell it by watching your show and Oh my God, anything, we are so anything. close. It's huh? so beautiful. And what I love about your story, you two, is that, like you said, Dee, you were a closet atheist, if you will. You deconverted, but you didn't yeah. tell anybody because yeah. you were afraid yeah. of how that would go. And and a lot of yeah. people are, they're afraid. I've talked to so many people who are in the closet with their deconstruction because they're afraid of losing friends or family. Now, I get yeah. that, and it's a legitimate fear, but you guys are revealing something else to us that, that and, and you did this with your, with your sister-in-law, Stacy. There are people mm -hmm. deconstructing around us that we're not aware of, and oftentimes, yeah. if we can just be a little more honest with where we are, you don't have to go up to your brother or your mom and say, hey, I'm an atheist. That's what I did. That's not what I would recommend. That's not the best way, but you could mm -hmm. start to say, I have questions. I have concerns yeah. with this faith. And what you'll often yeah. find is what, like what you guys found, they'll say, well, Hey, I do too. Now that you mm -hmm. mention it, let's talk about that. And you'll yeah. find, uh, oftentimes you'll find that people are not in the place you thought they were. So yeah. maybe yeah. the lesson is be a little more honest and a little more bold, perhaps, in some yeah. situations. Yeah. Yeah. I tried a few uh, times. She did. I she, tried. Would, she did. Yeah. And then when I started deconverting, that's kind of the way I started going about it with her was saying, yeah. I'm not, I'm kind of questioning this. What do you think? And so that, that is how our conversations started. So yeah, well, that's really cool I, to see that. I'm really, yeah. really happy for you guys and really proud of you thank and you. your show. Thank and you so much. The, yeah. <laughs> well, Dee, you keep being a badass. You keep you keep having, <laughs> well, having, having it go on. <laughs> or I was going to say, you, you keep you having it. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. I love you, Jimmy. <laughs> love no. you too, boo. Okay. Hey, Dee. I love Dee. you too, boo. <laughs> Dee, before you go. I love you all. D, Thank before you. you go, will you okay. tell Jimmy? Yep. D, tell Jimmy to yep. go fuck himself. Hey, Jimmy, go fuck uh, yourself because I love you. <laughs> well, if I wasn't gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna now. <laughs> Bye, Jimmy. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for calling Bye. in, D. Good to talk to you. Okay. Bye, Dave. Bye. 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 Talk to you later. Oh, she's awesome. <laughs> she's awesome. <laughs> That was funny. She really is. Let's that talk to Luke. You've been hanging in there, Luke. Sorry, because we, we got some folks hanging on the line. So appreciate your patience. Let's talk to Luke, he, him in Washington. Luke, you're on the line with Stacy and Dave. What's on your mind? Oh, hey there, Stacy and Dave. Um, yeah, I just wanted to call in and talk about just sort of the intersection between terminal illness and kind of how that has to do with faith and, and my whole family was Catholic and now they're not. And all, I yeah. think it all started when my mom was diagnosed as a uh, terminal ill. Wow. Yeah. So tell us about that. All right. Well, it was a bit ago. Um, <laughs> for all those concerned, my mother's fine now. She's still terminal, but she's doing very well. Um, 1998, I was 12. And the doctor said my mother had maybe 18 months to live. Hmm. So, yeah, that was a bit tough. Um, but, yeah, we had, and you guys have been talking about it here today, we had that community. We had the church community. We had that support. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of benefits from the church. I mean, it's, it's not for nothing for sure. But it's, it was interesting in that while my dad fell to pieces 
he's he's got problems, but he fell to pieces, and it was me and my younger brother. Mm. And boy, I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up when I was twelve. That's for sure. But it was people. I didn't see God. I didn't see religion itself doing much. But it was people. It was the community. It was those that cared, and that mm-hmm. really had an impact. Mm-hmm. It had a big impact, and that was that was that was important. But um, I think starting there with my mother being told my mother was going to die, and then basically having that deadline pushed back and back. It's been it's been over twenty years, and she's still kicking. She's still here. Wow, so, that's amazing. So yeah, she's she's a badass. But, how uh, did yeah, they it started there? And I think how did they get extended? If, if I don't. If, you don't mind? Did they oh, find sure. medications? How did she? Well, how has that happened? If yeah. So what months, happened was, years. yeah, uh, she responded better to treatment than most with her condition. Um, mm-hmm. I'm terrible with the terminology, but essentially the blood vessels in her lungs collapsed, and okay. so what then you had to do was was inflate inflate those blood vessels so she could. Her heart didn't give out. In fact, that's, that's how we discovered her condition was her, she, I think it was more or less a heart attack. And mm. she hit the floor one morning and my dad rushed her to the hospital and that started that journey. Um, so yeah, basically she responded super well to treatment. Um, and for the last 20 years, she's had um, vasodilators injected through a catheter uh, right through her blood vessels up next to her heart. So it goes from there to the lungs and yeah, so she's been living on a pump for 20 years now. Um, hmm. But doing quite well. Believe it or not, Viagra helps promote blood flow. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this it's, experience, we crack it up. <laughs> this experience, you say, turned your Catholic religious family into a non-religious family. How, how did, how did you see that play out? In pieces. In pieces. Because well, when you get news, like, Hey, Hey young man, your, um, your mother's going to die here. Uh, mm-hmm. Be lucky if you get two years, you know, yeah. it makes you do some thinking. Right. And mm-hmm. I kind of had to step up, take care of me and my brother and the household because my mother wasn't in any shape. Uh, my dad wasn't a whole lot of use. And basically introduced the concept of critical thinking in a big way because I had to start making decisions. And so mm-hmm. I, it kind of happened organically and it wasn't immediate. It's like, um, I actually loved it right before I got on. You're talking to D and about, you know, ask questions and don't be afraid to be someone that asks that question because someone else might have that question. And it was yeah. just bits and pieces. I stayed within the Catholic church for for gosh until i was graduating high school i believe Mm -hmm. i was confirmed catholic went through the whole process but it never carried any weight i was just there for the community and it was a critical thinking i think that went to college and i started asking questions how does this work why is that god theory any better than anything else and it was it was just having to it was having the responsibility to make the decisions, to uh, be forced into having to make good decisions and critically think about things, ask questions. Why does this work? Why does this not work? Um, did yeah? Did seeing um, her respond to like medical intervention and her her life prolong with just the help from from the doctors and stuff? Did that have any impact on? on you having those questions like you saw maybe Maybe. prayer necessarily yeah maybe um like i said it wasn't uh, when this when this all happened and of course it was other than the initial impact it was all pretty gradual you know you kind of get used to almost anything but um Mm. it it deepened our appreciation for each other and we never missed an opportunity hey i love you mom things like that um Mm -hmm. but it was, I saw the work doctors were doing. It wasn't mm-hmm. Jesus that was saving anyone. Yeah. It was doctors. It was nurses. It was medical technology. It was, it was all these other things, perfectly explainable things. Yeah. And everything had a rationale. And 
I actually called my mother as your show was starting to talk with her about it. And mm-hmm. she, she reminded me when, she, when this all happened, she, she wasn't huge on religion herself exactly, but she agreed mm-hmm. to raise us in the Catholic tradition. So she was doing her duty. She signed a contract and everything. It's kind of crazy. But, uh, a contract yeah, in the she lost her brother. Yeah. Wow. She was, she, she didn't really do church much, but when she married my father, uh, uh, there was a, somehow a contract involved to raise the children in the church or something. Wow. It, okay. We were very, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand it too well, but uh, she kind of let the kids out of it, obviously. But um, yeah, she, so she did that. She did that. She took us all the way through, confirmed Catholic, but um, she reminded me. She lost her brother uh, to, uh, he was murdered, and then shortly thereafter, she lost her sister to cancer, and then she was diagnosed with her condition. And then my father was filled with the Holy Spirit like nobody had ever seen. It may have been his reaction to her diagnosis. I'm not sure to this day. He confuses me in a lot of ways. But so he got very his example crazy. also caused me to question. He got very religious, athlete. what you're saying? Luke, hang on. I want to he clear did. that up. He got religious yeah. after her diagnosis? Is he still? He did. No. He's not. Oh. Okay. He he fell out of it. It was yeah. Um, I think it was maybe a coping mechanism for him. He's confessed yeah. a uh, fear of death. Yeah, yeah. That so sounds. I imagine that's that was pretty troubling. normal. That's a pretty normal reaction to, to news like terminal illness or accidents or somebody's threatened life threatening situation. It's pretty normal. Yeah. Uh, or common, I should say, not normal, but common for folks to run mm-hmm. to God, essentially, you know, let, let me deepen my faith or, you know, that a lot of people, uh, had faith as a child and they go away from it. Then something happens in life and they run back to God with their tail between their legs. Like, yeah. Oh God, you know, something's happening. I need you now. Um, it's very curious that the rest yeah. of your family didn't. And he did. Why do you think that is? <sighs> My father, I found is he's not, he, he, he is a clever guy. Uh, he's had some substance abuse issues. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call him a clever guy anymore, but I do believe he's always been fond of easy answers. And he, he latched on to it. Um, it was some miraculous apparitions, claims of apparitions in Medjugorje over in Bosnia. It was, I'm unclear on the details, but he actually traveled yeah. out there to Bosnia, wow. did a whole thing, the tour. Yeah, he, he got into it. Um, I think he was looking mm-hmm. for that easy answer. He was looking for, mm-hmm. looking for a way to send off death somehow. I'm, I'm not sure. I, think, I, think I don't that's, talk with him about these things. Huh? I think that's a big key. I think that's a very good way to put that easy answers that's what faith offers when you're dealing with tragedy or um death or fear of death yeah. or, or uh issues in life uh, believing in a god who who's supposed to be able to fix that here's the thing they do and we've all seen this happen so mom gets sick and you pray for mom to get well so there's the easy answer. So if 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 mom gets well, then God did it. Mm-hmm. If mom doesn't get well, then God took her home or had a better plan or yeah. things we don't understand. Either way, it's an We're easy answer. And, yeah, yeah. Easy. Either way, it's an easy mm-hmm. answer. And you don't have to deal with the nuance of life. You don't have to deal with complexity and questions that don't have answers. Why did my mom died when, when I was still a teenager. That's a very hard thing for a teenager to go through. Well, stuff happens, but if you're, if you're a Christian, then God had a plan and he's going to mm-hmm. build your faith and, and whatever. So I think you nailed it, Luke. It's, it's the easy answer approach to tough questions. It is. Yeah. They don't ask you to do anything other than 
hey, show up, you know, worship, do all this, do all that. And, of course, you do get benefits. There's there's legitimacy to, you know, those who suffer loss, recover better uh, with community, religious or not. It's it's community. It's that support network. It is the community. And you you saw that as a kid. uh, Yeah. (laughs) It's interesting that even as a kid, you could recognize it was the people doing it and not the God. (laughs) <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, of course. I mean, I don't know. I think I always had to kind of see it for myself. I wasn't quite at a stage in my life where I could think about, you know, it wasn't exactly a critical thought. It was just, well, I haven't, I didn't see it happen. So what do you mean? Mm-hmm. No, that's good. You had, you had some mm-hmm. cognitive ability there that a lot of people don't. <clears throat> and your mom's yeah, well, good now? Yeah, in magic, but Santa Claus was already gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your mom's doing good now. She is, yeah. She's she's doing great. She's had some ups and downs, but the yeah. treatment's still working. Um, That's yeah. good. She's happy and appreciative, and we're living her best life. And we make all the <laughs> all the morbid jokes and oh yeah, we talked about right. hey, how's that insurance policy been? <laughs> you know, what are we gonna do with uh, the house? After, you know, all these kinds of conversations. Because you can't run from it. You no, can't run it, from it's, it. It's there. They, they call it trouble right. for a reason. Logging in. No, it's right. You're right. You you either uh, come to terms with our mortality or or don't. And um, it's it's harder for some than others. And that's how we can help each other. I think is to talk about it, laugh about it, um, and and just make it normal. A normal part of living is dying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and do your best. Yep, do your best. That's do it. Your, do your best. And I think I, some people might consider it a burden, but I consider it to be more valuable the time that I've had with my mother than the years prior. Oh. And it would have been cheapened if it was, oh, because God has kept her. No, mm-hmm. right. we work hard. We moved. From from a high elevation in Colorado down to a lower elevation in Washington, so she could breathe easier. I mean, uh, we worked hard. We've earned this. We've taken care of each other. It's it's all got so much value, so much so much love being shared. And and I, I'd like to think that, of course, we would have, you know, said as many "I love yous" and hugs and all these as 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 we have. But honestly, wow. what I can't rewind time and, and know for sure, but I can tell you that I definitely appreciate the people around me even more for having confronted and dealt with that when I was twelve. It's mm-hmm. awesome. It it shapes. It you shapes sound them. like a really really back. good son. <laughs> you sound yeah. like a well, good family a good and mom. a really good son. Yeah. Well, you've got a good perspective. Good I love the way you. I love the way you say we worked hard. We earned this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is so healthy, honestly, because as a Christian, we would have never said that. It's all God. You, you, uh, you yeah. arrogant asshole. You, you have to give the credit to God. But mm-hmm. the reality is we are human beings and our humanity is what gets us through things. Our humanness and our care for one another is what makes life happen and makes life good. Yeah. And I love that you recognize that, Luke, and that you are not afraid to say it. We worked hard. We earned this. Fuck yes, you did. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I love, love it. it. Well, Luke, thanks for calling, well, man. Give me a time to wish. What's that? Oh, absolutely. Well, I said it may be bonus time as far as we're concerned, but honestly, it all is. You never know when, mm-hmm. when, when it's your last. So definitely don't waste yep. it. That's true. Yeah. Well, man, I appreciate talking Thank to you. you. Um, thanks for calling in. It was really fun to talk to you, and I appreciate your perspective. And give our best to your mom and tell her mm-hmm. that this dying man will oh, ALS. Sure. Thank you very much. Nice to talk to you, Dad. You too, man. Take care, Luke. Bye. Bye. How great was that? Nah, that was, he's a really nice guy. I just love his perspective on all this and he yeah. just 
he figured it out young and recognized mm-hmm. that there's no God anywhere doing anything. It's it's up to right? us. It's up to us. I'm, and we take the blame when we fuck up. We take the credit when we do mm-hmm. something good. And I love that. Exactly. Yeah. And it's I'm always simple. a little jealous of people who figure it out <laughs> that young. <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> Think how I feel, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go That's to how my Dave. Mom feels. Dave, what a great name. Dave, he, him in Texas. <laughs> Hey, Dave, you're on the line with Stacy and Dave. How you doing? (laughs) Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave and Stacy. How are you guys? Good. Good. What's on your mind today? Yeah, I am just recently diagnosed with um, stage four cancer. And um, and my story is kind of, I think, echoes um, your story a little bit, Dave. I grew up in a very Christian family. I'm also 60 years old. Um, went to Christian college. Actually, was uh, was gay as well. <laughs> this is another layer to my story. And uh, kind of went into public education. Um, and I kind of stayed in the church, always hoping that somehow maybe God would heal me of this, you know, gay thing. But um, over the last five years or so, you know, and I, this is like a shout out to you guys. You guys have completely helped me deconvert out Mm -hmm. of Christianity. I really felt like I was so, um, you know, brainwashed and lived, you know, for a long period of my life, you know, just in denial about who I was and, um, and sacrificed, you know, a lot of my happiness. And, um, so now I've reached this point where I, you know, I've, um, totally happy, you know, being deconverted. And, and then of course, then I get hit with this, you know, um, cancer diagnosis and, and I'm not really afraid to, of dying or anything like that. It's just, um, it just kind of whacks you pretty hard at first. Um, but really kind of the question I had was because, because I was in the church for so long, I have many friends that are in the church and my whole family is very religious. And I slowly kind of came out to everybody and then felt the distance from people and people trying to, you know, give me their opinion on what they felt about that. Um, and then I came out as atheist and then people gave me their opinion about, you know, about that. And now I've got cancer and now they're giving me their opinion about that. So I've kind of gone through these like different layers and I don't mm-hmm. know at this point what to do about these sort of, pseudo friendships now because um i mean these were some some you know platonic male friends that i had in the church that just were like my best friends ever Mm. and we did a lot of stuff together and talked about a lot of stuff you know and i don't i don't know for you dave like you coming out of the church if you lost like a lot of your good friends or i don't understand why we can't talk about these issues because i don't remember actually having tons of religious conversations with my friends we just did fun stuff together camping and fishing. We did stuff with our families and all kinds of stuff. And then all of a sudden, because you're, you're not Christian anymore, you're just out of our life, you know? Mm -hmm. Did they have, do you feel like they had more problem when you, more of a problem with you coming out gay or coming out as not believing anymore? I think not believing was harder. Um, because I thought, I think in their mind, they kept thinking that, well, you're gay because You know, your dad died when you were really young. You grew up with three sisters. It's a mental thing. You know, God can heal you. Right. And Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But the atheist thing was really difficult. In fact, with my really best best friend, we were were camping, and I was, you know, just telling him about, you know, these books that I read on atheism were really kind of like the God delusion and Hitchens' works, Mm -hmm. you know, and Sam Harris. And I told him about the atheist show and stuff, and. And I said, there's so many questions I have about the Bible. And I go, like, how do you explain some of these things, you know? And we got on the topic of Moses, the story of Moses and the sacrifice of of Isaac. And I told him, you know, when I was in Europe, I saw this painting of Moses with his arm with the knife above Isaac. And Isaac was just in terror. You you mean Abraham. Abraham and Isaac. Abraham, 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 yeah. Abraham, yeah. 
Yeah. Abraham. Yeah. Abraham and Isaac. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I asked him about that. I said, that's like child abuse. That, that kid probably suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, that was just like, <laughs> why does there have to be like a, a child sacrifice, you know? And then he goes, and, and he, and he just kind of shut me down and he said, this is the most beautiful story, like in the whole Bible, because this oh foreshadows God. Jesus coming and the sacrifice of God's son, Jesus. And it happened on the same spot, the same spot that this sacrifice was going to occur. It's the same place where the cross was and all this stuff. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, <laughs> this person, That's like, bullshit. Com- completely, <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I, it's just like, how can you can't think from this other perspective at all? It was just completely shutting me down and getting well, angry and then kind of yeah. shouting at me they how can't. beautiful yeah. the story is. They That's can't. Very, it's very common. Stacey, you can speak to that. Yeah. You've experienced the same thing. What do you, you know, the yeah. question is, why is it difficult for non-Christians to keep their Christian friends? What's, what is it about coming out as a non-Christian that troubles them so? What do you think? I think they're, I think they're afraid because I know that, um, I, so when I watch, cause I still watch these shows when I'm doing housework and I, I still want to learn from everyone on, on these shows, like what we're doing right now. And I like hearing other people's perspectives, but I think back to when I was a Christian and if I would have heard these types of discussions being had, it would have been really hard for me because I would have been thinking, okay, they're making sense, but I don't think they should be making sense. And it would have freaked me out. And I do know that um, when I did start to deconvert, um, a friend of mine was who was a Christian, she was sharing things on her social media from deconstruction accounts. Um, and I was like, I kind of want to take a peek because I'm sure they're all going to be wrong. And when I did look at the posts and what they were saying, I thought, oh, they're not actually wrong. I don't think I think what they're saying is starting to make a lot of sense. And it really got the wheels turning and it got me thinking. And so I think that why they don't want to hear you talking about it is because then they might start to question. And I know that they might think, well, if you left and if you questioned, well, could that happen to me? Um, Yes. And because that's, because for me, I was so devoted. I was so like, I lived and breathed it. So I think if people like thought, well, if if Stacy can leave, well, then anyone can leave. And if she can question, well, then, well, then I could even question and maybe I'll find out something that will just rock my faith. And I don't think I want to do that. That's really scary, but I'm just such a curious, I I just want to find things out. And so once I decided, no, I kind of want to figure this out and, and see what these posts are saying and then go even deeper and deeper, the deeper I went, it was more fascinating than scary in the long run. So yeah, I think depending, I don't know what your, like, I mean, if you, if you grew up in church or anything, but if you were someone who was there every week and just was so devoted, if your friends are seeing you question and leave, they could be like, okay, well, what did he find out? I don't know if I'm ready to find out what he found out. I think I agree with that a hundred percent, Stacey. I think they're fearful. They're afraid mm-hmm. that if it happened to me, it could happen to them because they know the level of faith that I was in, that I adhered to. I wasn't playing games. It was real. Mm-hmm. And so they just, they're just they just terrified that it could it could be. And so they get angry with you, Dave. You see, you've seen them get angry when you question some of these deeply held beliefs, we like to say. Um, mm-hmm. They're terrified. They don't know what to do with it. They don't have a category. You know, the Bible talks about backsliding and the prodigal son. And, you know, these are are stories they love to repeat because they're the, you know, God always wins in the end. What they don't have a category for is someone voluntarily walking away from the faith and saying, I don't believe there's a God anymore. They don't know where to put that. There is no place for that. And so they have to shame you saying you never did really believe, or you just want to sin Mm -hmm. or, um, 
any of the other number of, of ready excuses for them to not have to actually deal with it. I had a friend, yeah. a, a former friend who was in my Jesus freak days back in, in the seventies. Um, he started contacting me um, on Facebook messenger uh, a few months ago. And it, it kind of started increasing where he basically was sending me memes and, and videos of preachers. And, and so he started, uh, sending me messages and essentially saying, well, he actually said once, he said, I just don't understand what happened to you, Dave. You were on fire. And I said, well, I could tell you, or you could, I actually called him one time because he was, he kept sending me messages. And I just said, if you want to talk, why don't we just talk? And so I called mm -hmm. him and, but I said, I've, I wrote a whole book about this actually. <laughs> and I said, I said, Danny, you're in the book. So, you know, my memoir goes into great detail on what happened to my faith and how it unfolded, how it unwrapped. And he said, I don't want to read that garbage. I said, oh, okay, well, then we're done. We're done talking here, aren't we? Because you don't really want to know what happened to me. You just want to fix me. You're not curious about what happened. You just want me to be like I was before so that you can keep me in the category you want me in. So... Mm -hmm. I think Dave, you've, you've, you're, I think you're experiencing some of that. These friends of yours are number one, afraid that what happened to you could happen to them. But number two, they don't know what to do with you. They don't, they're not curious about what I haven't had one person yet in 12 years of being deconverted, sit down and literally seriously ask me, I want to know, Dave, I'm curious, help me understand, walk me through the process. They don't really want to know. They just want to fix us. They want us to be back like we were when they were comfortable with us. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's that's true because that's my experience too. Is that I really want to talk about it. Like I, yeah, I want to talk about my experiences don't. of being like in the church and all these things that I've learned about um, the Bible from a different viewpoint and then all these different contradictions and stories and mm -hmm. all these things that I was taught and all the science I have to deny and all this, you know, and yeah. it's just like, um, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's exciting when you, it, when you learn something new, you want to share that with those people, especially people who you were really close to and you're used to sharing those things with normally. So yeah, to not yeah. being able to have those conversations, it would be really disappointing. And it's it's always been hard around family, but but now, like I yeah. was, one of my sisters was very fundamentalist, and I was visiting her in her, and and I was shown like scans of my bones, or like where the cancer had spread, you know, and stuff, and and she didn't want to look at them, but she said, "I want to lay hands on you and pray." And what I wanted to do was talk about like my treatment and what's going on and how you could support me and things like that. And mm -hmm. then this turned into like, we want you to our church and we want to lay hands on you. And, yeah. and I just feel like, you know, no, you're praying for me, but you know, no thanks, you know? Yeah. And I, Oh, sorry. No, go Can, ahead. I, I, Oh, I, I just was thinking of, um, when I was in my last pregnancy, I, the last month of it, I got a really uh, bad diagnosis um, and I had to be closely monitored. Um, anyways, it, it was a, a really bad condition where um, I, if I didn't get this monitoring and all this blood work and all these tests done for the last four weeks, um, my baby could have died at 37 weeks. So he had, I had to be induced, um, something to do with like the, the bile acids in my blood. It made me extremely itchy and, um, just put my baby at high risk. And so I was sharing that information with two friends, um, and because I was in the hospital and everything. And one of the friends, after I shared this with her, cause I was keeping her up to date, her, advice to me rather than just, oh, I'm so glad that you're getting this looked after her. What she said to me was, well, have you spoken to your body and just told it to, to leave? Like hmm. basically <laughs> have you like putting it on me? It. Um, yeah. 
yeah, like, and I was like, are you kidding me right now? Like, I'm worried about my baby living. I'm worried. I'm in so much discomfort and you're basically blaming me. Like I have some kind of control over this condition. And then I had another friend when I was filling her in, she was super Looney Tune Christian. And she said, well, I think every time that you start to feel itchy, which was 24 seven, it was awful. Um, she said, I think every time you feel itchy, you should just start to sing. You should start singing to the mm. Lord. And I mm. was like, none of this mm. is good advice. And my baby could die. And so that just reminded me yeah. of your sister just saying, can I just lay hands on you? It's like, no, <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah, those, those reactions from Christians are the opposite of empathy. They might absolutely. They might try to couch it as empathy and caring, but it's the opposite. It's it's back to the previous caller. It's the easy answer. Let me just let me just throw some faith at this because I'm yes. too uncomfortable to crawl into your pain and discomfort with you. And that's mm -hmm. what they're doing to you, Dave. And I'm very sorry about yeah. that because you you yeah. need someone yeah. that you need yeah. someone to to crawl into that with you and and listen to you, even if you just need yeah. to vent. But but for them to basically shut you up by laying hands on you, fuck that. I'm serious. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. And and I've experienced yeah. the and same thing. It's Christian. sad because yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it's sad because I I left that trip thinking I don't know if I want to go back. You know, and it's and it's like I care about my family, but I've never been really close to my family. But now would be the best time to be close. You know, or restore any kind of you know relationship. But I just it's can't tough. deal with that anymore. Exactly. It's tough because they make it tough. They won't deal with this on a human level. It's all about faith or non-faith. They won't look at me as a human. Now I deal with the, you know, I have ALS and it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. progressing. The, the symptoms are, the disease is progressing. I hate that. It's kind of a backwards word. Progression means positive, but it's not positive. Many of my family haven't seen me in years. They're going to be, I'm going to see them all in a couple of, in a few days for a big, my mom's 90th birthday party, but they're going to be a bit shocked at my appearance and how I walk and the struggle that I have, you know, having to be fed and the, and the basic things of life. The reality is none of them have called me on a regular basis, except my son and asked me, how are you doing? You know, how, what's going on? You know, what kind of struggles are you having now? You know, what's what's hard to do? What's what's the new adjustments you're having to make? Because it doesn't take a lot of research to figure out what ALS looks like, if you care at all. But I guarantee yeah. you they'll all tell me they've been praying for me because that's all they know to do. But they don't know how to crawl into my pain with me. Whereas my atheist friends, they are there. They are staring at it with open eyes. They're not flinching from it. They're there in the midst of it with me. They're coming around here to help me in physical ways. And I just, it's dumbfounding to me to see the Christian's reactions to things like your cancer, Dave, and your birth issues, Stacy, and my ALS, and how they would want to slap an easy answer on it. Because it's so much easier than actually caring. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's funny because, you know, when you said, um, you know, when you feel the itching, sing. And I thought, well, that's such a great idea. You know, when I feel the pain, I'll sing. But then it, but then it's like, sing the Christian songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. I, uh, you know, because I, I do listen to more music than I ever have in any time of my life, you know, as a way to kind of manage pain and you know, and, mm -hmm. and just reflect on the joys that I've had in my life. And I've done the same thing you have, Dave. I have journaled and journaled and journaled and typed everything up. And it's like almost a thousand pages of, of all this stuff that kind of transitioned in my life around growing up in this fundamentalist faith and being brainwashed and then going to the Christian college and then, you know, thinking about the ministry. You know, I did a bunch of mission trips and things. But um, write it, that it, book, brother. It's been a write that book. Write that yeah, book. You got a book I know. In you. I, I, <laughs> Have you gotten I, my I think book? There is a book I think there. You might I like it. <laughs> oh, you should I, definitely I, I get his book. So every... 
What'd you say? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, what's funny is that my story like fits all of your shows. <laughs> and I'm have you, so have grateful you read my shows. I can Have you read my memoir? I can't tell you how much. Oh, no, thank I haven't. You. And I heard you mention that. So I'll, I'll take a look. I'll see if I can t- uh, find that. Um, but I really have, I mean, you guys have just saved my life, your shows, because I've listened oh, to man. all of those in the background because I started working. I started working from home and I just keep listening to them over and over because it just gives me, um, it helps me just c- continue to have that deconversion process going on. So I think I just have to kind of keep um, relearning the things that I was taught as a kid. So thanks so much mm-hmm. um, for, for listening to me. Well, how are you, how are you doing? I mean, um, you got cancer, you deconverted. Do you have support? I mean, I see that you're in Texas. Oh my God. I just, that state, I'm, I, that's where I'm, that's <laughs> no, where I'm going. I, we're going there this week. My family's in East Texas and we're going to be there, but I'm just, yeah, kinda, I'm, I'm originally from, originally from San Diego. And I always thought that I was going to retire in San Diego because that's kind of where a lot of my family was. And I just wanted to be in the cool weather. Um, but, um, I have an adopted son who's in the air force and he's been really super supportive and I have, you know, I have a couple really good friends from work that are pretty supportive. Um, but I don't have that, that best, best friend that I did like when I was, you know, Christian and that's, what's been kind of hard for me. Um, yeah. so what's the, um, prognosis mm-hmm. with your cancer, if you don't mind me asking, you know, yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's prostate cancer that, you know, when it breaks out of the prostate, it just kind of, it goes into the bone structure. And during the COVID period, I didn't, I think I went like two years without any appointments. I didn't have any symptoms. And then all of a sudden I just started getting this, these really painful, just random pain in my bone. And the doctor didn't know what it was. Nobody, and my, mm. when they measured your blood, it wasn't really showing up in the blood, which could have been just a, a bad test that they did or something. So I went like mm-hmm. another six months not getting treatment. And then it took a couple of months to start treatment by then, you know, had spread pretty widely. But once they start the medic medication, it kind of just puts everything on hold, which is what I'm experiencing now. But the, the damage to the bones, you know, I have the same problem you kind of do with your neck. Like my neck hurts all the time. And I've got a mm-hmm. tumor that's on my tailbone. So I hurt mm-hmm. a lot sitting. Um, and the it tends to like to go into the the spinal um the bones in the spine and so the spine periodically sends painful shots down my legs and stuff but it's mm-hmm. you know i've kind of been pushing myself to just keep kind of an active life and sometimes i push myself through the pain and the medication has some side effects but really the last um, two years that I've been on the medicine, I've really just been almost status quo. I can tell that there's, it's slowly kind of progressing a little bit, but it's, um, you know, the prognosis, according to Google, where I was at was like two years. And so I hit my two years, you know, but there I've you also go. recently heard too, heard that other people have lived, you know, four or five, you know, more years too. So, um, you know, so I'm, I'm hanging in there, you know, and a lot of times, for at first, I couldn't get it out of my mind almost every day I was thinking about it. And now I don't always think about it, you know, uh, you know what my future is going to be and everything like that. I just try to live each day for, for what it is, you know, and do the best I can. It's really, I, I, I teach um, psychology courses online, and so it's really refocused my desire to help students, you know, because these are like 18, 19-year-old students. And... Um, a lot of them have lots of challenges in their life. And so, um, you know, that's where I kind of put some of my energy as well. Dave, you're a beautiful person. Um, I, I just, yeah, um, man, I'm, I'm really glad to talk with you. Um, reach out to me if you want to. Um, you can find my email on any of my websites, DaveOutloud.org. I am DaveOutloud.org. DaveOutloud at gmail.com. I'm pretty open about all this stuff. And I, I'd love to keep in touch with you if you'd like and just, you know, see how you're doing. Thanks. Yeah. um, You're a good guy. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I hope it doesn't sound weird. Sometimes people don't, but I'm proud of you for the changes you've made and the way you've navigated them and, and how you're just 
pressing on and giving it your best and not letting life beat you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually, it's just the, that one thing that happens when you have a diagnosis like this, it really just sharpens your attention about Doesn't it? the meaning of <laughs> the meaning of life and what's important in life and all that. And so that's been the blessing really in a way, yeah. but it's, I mean, it's, it's sad that, you know, of course there's going to be, the the end days down the road but yeah i've said that many um, times it does sharpen your focus and that does end up being paradoxically it does end up being a blessing as you say to to cause us to focus on the things that matter and to maximize the days so good on you for doing that All right. Well, thanks for uh, taking my call. Appreciate it so much. You bet, Dave. Thanks for calling in, it's buddy. It's really nice okay. talking to you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Stacy. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care. Damn. <laughs> that would mean. <laughs> I feel misty. Yeah. Um, I'm so. I'm so happy that we get to talk about these kind of real things with real people mm -hmm. even if it's because people yeah yeah he needed just felt like he needed someone to talk to tonight <laughs> and i'm just glad that we're here i mean to yeah. hear that you know that he people watch these that's why we do this stuff you know i know because people are out there watching that we don't know about and it helps them it helps them yeah. navigate life and god damn there's just nothing better than that <sighs> yeah it really is okay we got to do some super chat girl Are you okay Compose yourself yeah <laughs> i'll do the first one and then you take it we'll flip flop okay <clears throat> sounds good ten dollars from the atheist christian well there's a paradox thank you so mm. much thank you 9.99 from Brinpu Casey, always a great show with Dave and Stacy is icing on the cake. Aw, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you need to say that with a little more zest. I'm but sorry, I'll it. get there. No, I, that was I, such I, a nice I, beginning, and then <laughs> go fuck yourself, yeah. Jimmy. Um, okay, there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ten dollars from the Raven Two Hundred. I'm lucky enough to have a family of mostly people who don't care about me being an atheist, mostly. Though there's some who don't understand, I don't believe in the traditional tribal beliefs either. It is good to have some support from family somewhere. I do have that too. And yes, I agree, Raven. It's nice. Um, and we just have to find the support where we can find it. And the people that don't agree or don't understand, we just have to let them not have so much power yeah. over us yeah uh 1999 from greg markowski nobody gets out alive i don't know what ctfd is <laughs> ctfd baby well I'll, i'm gonna educate you there it's kind of a private okay. thing for us. greg's a big supporter of mine has been he's on the board of our nonprofit. i am dying out loud oh. and um CTFD is Carpe the fucking Diem. Oh, yeah. Okay. Of course I know that. I've just never <laughs> seen it abbreviated. Yes. Carpe the fucking Diem, baby. Yes. There you go. That, that explains a all lot. The, time. the only thing I'd ever seen CTFD used for before was calm the fuck down. So this is nicer. Yeah, too. Well, it, okay. it works both ways. Thank okay. you, Greg. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I like that. <laughs> $5 from RPG Debunks. Whenever I hear the Stacy's Mom podcast, I sing the chorus of the song Stacy's Mom in my head, and then I feel old. <laughs> uh huh. I hear that song pretty much every day when I'm at whenever I go to work. It gets played on the playlist, and I'm just I chuckle to myself. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and uh, it's it's yeah. a, it's a fun song, and the video is every every young man's wet dream, right? <laughs> Oh my God. Do you know what? One time when that song first came out, because it, I saw in the chat, someone said it came out in 2003 and that's correct. But um, I actually had someone who I had a crush on at the time come and tell me that they considered trying to date me just so that they could get 
to my mom. <laughs> and I was so insulted. Oh my <laughs> God. I what? had a crush on him. And I was like, why? Okay, first of all, why would you tell me that? Oh, and even if you're doing that, don't tell her. Fuck's sake. I know. I know. It, was, it was me. Uh, yeah, it was, it was you. you. Go, go fuck yourself. In 2003. Jim. Yeah, that's really shaky. Oh I was only 13. God. Yeah, that'd be about right. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, we didn't wait, read go that back. one. We missed Greg. We missed Greg. I was Hang telling the story. To... We missed uh, the last okay. one there. Yes. Nine... That's me to read. Nine ninety nine from Greg Markowski. Again, thank you, Greg. Apostasy is so wonderful. I had to give another super chat. Money is just flying out of my wallet. Aw, uh, yeah. thank you. That's really sweet. <laughs> thank you, Greg. Ten dollars from the atheist Christian again. Dave, you're my hero. I hope that I can be as strong and dignified as you when my time comes. Stacy, you and your mother are great additions to the community. Aw, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And I agree with that second statement. Dave is wonderful. <laughs> Uh, 999 from Strobes. Maybe have answered already, but will we see Genevieve as a guest? I miss that GD show and happy you are back for a weekly show, but miss the G part and curious what happened. Love you, Dave. Big fan. Thank you. Um, yeah, I miss doing the GD show too. It was needed to take a break to, so I can focus on a couple other things. And Jimmy does so much of the work here for this show that it makes this a lot easier. Um, I, I, I'd love to have Genevieve on. I just have kind of, we've kind of lost touch a little bit and I'm think she's just really busy or going through some things, but, um, she's definitely on my list of co-hosts in the future. I hope. And yeah, um, it's never been that goddamn show. It's always been Genevieve and Dave. So <laughs> there. Awesome. Um, oh, Kathleen, $10 from Kathleen Moncrief. I think that's how you say it. There is something extra wholesome about Dave telling Jimmy to go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's. I think it's even Aww. more wholesome when you say it, Stacey. I don't know. It's just a <laughs> sweet little soccer mom saying, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> the Thank first you, time Kathy. I was on when I did it, when I did the show with Jimmy, it was really hard to say it. But by the end, I was getting a little better at it. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a term of endearment. We just need to recognize that. I know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> $25 from Michael. This is Charles from St. Louis. I just got out of the hospital and I'm doing great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hey, Charles. Uh, thank you for the super chat and good to hear from you. And really glad that you're doing well. Um, Charles has been having some health challenges and I was supposed to go to St. Louis a couple of weeks ago to speak at the Secular Student Alliance and just a, a series of events pre prevented Bevan and I from making that trip. It was just going to be too hard on us. And so we canceled at the last minute and I was supposed to meet Charles there, but he wasn't able to come out either. So we didn't get a chance to meet. But nonetheless, thanks, Charles. Good to hear from you. That's nice. Okay, $10 from the Raven 200. I'm here at a park listening to the show and an ice cream truck came by. I bought a Twix ice cream bar. Jimmy, go get stuck in traffic with a prostatizing Emmanuel pottery argument and all. Oh my God, okay. that's, that, that's, that's a living hell. You've seen Emmanuel on yeah. here. Least. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. So getting stuck with him is hell. That's hell. Uh -huh. And now I, now we've, I want, uh, nothing, I want we've, nothing more than a Twix ice cream bar right now, Raven. Yeah. Thank you. We've pretty well decided to probably ban Emmanuel from calling yeah. in. There's some, it's basically gotten to this point where even though now I've gotten a new email saying, no, I'm not a troll. Uh, I, I actually think it may, it may have always been a troll, may have always been a joke because of an email. I receive, but also just um, at this point, it feels like it's one of two things. It's either a troll or we're beating up on somebody whose brain isn't very capable. And yeah, it's, we don't it's win in either way. It's a colossal waste of time. And I'm, I'm all for having conversations with any Christian or any believer of any kind. If they're an, uh, an intelligent conversation, willing to listen, willing to 
actually talk back and forth because I'm willing to listen. I'm not just pounding my rock. So it's just be honest and be genuine and be kind. If you're just throwing out your stuff and not listening, it's just not going. Any- I'm just really tired of those things, honestly. Mm-hmm. $20 from Daryl Ray. Dr. Daryl, thank you, brother. So we're gonna nice. Get, we're going to get that fundraiser to 40000 at least, maybe forty five. We're We're going to blow that thing out. <sighs> So thank you, Daryl. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, oh, five dollars again from RB RPG Debunks. Jimmy, may you get stuck on an elevator with Wes, Andrew, and Emmanuel at the same time, and may they rehash all of their worst arguments with a bunch of emojis. Ha. We also just banned Wes <laughs> from the show. <clears throat> so a lot of oh. all love coming to you tonight, Jimmy. That's that's really great. So much Good love. Mm-hmm. Oh, so much love. All the love. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Five dollars from the Raven Two Hundred. <laughs> God, this just the love just keeps on. Jimmy, go get stuck in a room with Charlie for forty-eight hours, who still won't get to the point and keeps preambling. This is so but when you know when I tell you, oh, it's gonna be you're gonna know it's true, and Jesus Christ, <laughs> you're gonna know. And oh, once you hear the words, and it's oh you're gonna know it. God. Oh my god, that's basically <laughs> Raven, you're a, a, a perfect it tonight. impression of all Charles. The, all the best stuff, that's great. I love it. Okay, uh, six dollars or from so Lord the, the correct way to say is that it, I've tried to teach everyone yeah, is six dollars euro, right, Jimmy? Six dollars euro. Yeah, okay. dollars so, euro. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I was no, like, it's actually you. just six euro, but I butchered it the okay. other day. Go ahead. Okay. A lot of people will even say yeah. euros. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay. So some money from <laughs> Lord there is, there is right there. <laughs> It's really worth six dollars euro to get Dave to say, "Oh, dollars euro at least two, maybe three more times." Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. There you go with gusto, uh, Lord Joris. You nailed it. I didn't even read. I didn't even read the chat before I, I started yeah. doing my dollars euro. But yeah, I'll say it. Six dollars euro. It's it's a new thing. It's gonna catch on. I think. <laughs> Oh, uh, five dollars from the Raven Two Hundred. By the time you read this, I'll be at an arcade. So, CTFD, Dave and Stacy, Jimmy, go get cursed to never have good audio quality again. Okay, now you've gone <laughs> way too far. <laughs> but the super chats keep coming, so you know it's a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. You can't just. There's a limit, okay? There's a limit. Now you've crossed the line. <laughs> you found it. Yes, the line. You found the line. The line. (laughs) See what I did there? Yep. Very punny. Oh, $5 from Derek Cruz. Great show tonight. Thank you, Stephen Stacy. Thank you, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Appreciate it. Ah, $9.99 from Greg Markowski again. Dave, when you were a Jesus freak, did you have long hair? Can we see a picture? Ah, well, Good yes, question. I, had long, I had long hair in the 70s. Everyone had long hair. I have two iterations of my long hair. One was I had I had super curly hair and there is a picture floating around. There's several of them. There was a recent podcast that I did where the guy wanted the host wanted a picture and I sent him one. So it's it's somewhere in the interwebs. Um, I had really curly hair, and so I when I when I didn't want curly hair, I tried to smush it down and make it straight, but it never worked very well. And then when I just finally gave up and let it go, now this is true. This is a true story. I actually prayed one time for God to make my hair straight, and He didn't. But um, <laughs> I actually wore an afro. It was a full blown afro, uh, natural curly oh, hair, wow. in the seventies. Yeah, yeah, a sight to behold. <laughs> Guess what part of mine I asked for God to make straight on me? Um, My orientation. I'm not going to go there. We thought I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. You prayed for straight hair. You 
You tried to pray yeah. the gay hair away? The gay curly hair, yeah. <laughs> Okay, $10 from Sarah Dye. Hi, Dave and Stacy. Luke was an awesome caller. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Thanks, yeah, Sarah. Was. Hi, Sarah. Good to hear from you. Yeah, Luke was great. It was a good, good, mm -hmm. a lot of good calls tonight. $5 yeah. from Taishi Kojima. Kojima. I think I got that. I think it's Taishi oh. Kojima, but. Well, Kojima? Wow. Yeah. Good, Jimmy. But, okay. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> I, I wasn't even close. I thought I, I thought I nailed That's it. That's okay. Just it. Here's one for all the moms out there who get it going on, who got it going on. Thanks for all you guys do. Carpe the fucking diem. Yep, the moms got Love it going it. on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Five dollars from Lynn O. Love you and your work, Dave. Thank you. Yes. Thank you much. Five dollars from Panda. I can't stay, but wanted to show support. CTFD. Thank you. Watch it back. So nice. Watch the playback. Yeah. <laughs> Ten dollars from Thomas Wachter. Wachter. Mm. I love you, Dave. I am doing so much better. Kim and I will always remember our fantastic times with you. Oh, Thomas, good to hear from you, my friend. I'm, I'm uh, again, sorry for your loss. Kim, his wife, Kim, died um, last year. Oh. Thomas and Kim were regular watchers of the GD show, and Kim would always, okay. her, her tag was Kim Possible, and she would always do a $6.66 donation. <laughs> it was Aww. the Antichrist donation. And then I got a message from Thomas that she had, had died suddenly. We actually got to meet them at the nano nanocon conference in nashville last year so okay Aww. thank you thomas good to hear from you i'm glad you're doing better bro mm -hmm. so wow yeah <sighs> so, a lot of emotions tonight stacy i agree this was awesome i love spending time with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say when you sign up to do a show with dave there's gonna be emotion usually <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm here for it. No. Part of the territory. Um That's fine. So yeah, we're tell us where we can find your stuff and when's the Stacy Mom's oh, podcast yeah. on and all the things. Yeah, so you can find my stuff at the Stacy's Mom podcast. Um we we are doing one live show a week right now. Um just with the way our my mom and my schedule is allowing. Um, so it's going to be, I think, Mondays during the summer. Just so keep an eye out for that. You can turn on notifications <laughs> when you subscribe yeah. so that you know. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're just having a lot of fun doing it. And it's, it's, it's really been great for us. Uh, and just all the encouragement that we've been receiving has been wonderful. So thank you for that. And um, I also do co-host on Skeptic Haven as well on Wednesday nights. So, um, but I'm really loving doing the Stacey's Mom podcast. So subscribe to that, please. Yes. And <laughs> on the Skeptic Haven, you guys interview guests on that usually, right? Most yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And actually yeah. tomorrow we're having my sister-in-law, Erin. So that'll be really oh, fun. Cool. Yeah. Well, you guys are badass. You and Aaron and, and uh, Dee, you guys are, you know, <laughs> you're speaking up and you're mm -hmm. helping people. And that's that's the whole, I know it's the whole reason you do it because you know yeah. what, what these kind of shows meant to you. And so yeah. you know, kudos to you for stepping out and doing Definitely. it. Definitely. Probably stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit, you know, and just going for it. And that's really, gr that's mm -hmm. really great. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's fun because I haven't done a show with Aaron since we did the GD show with you uh, back in oh, yeah. December. So, oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I love what you titled that one, the outlaw sister-in-laws. So Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> that what you are. Mm -hmm. We that are. Was fun. Yeah. Yeah. She's great too. So that'll be a great She's show, wonderful. guys, to tune into that. And remember to yeah. support us on patreon.com slash call the line. And um, thank you for your support tonight, your calls. Your super chats, your your viewing, like and subscribe this show if you haven't yet. 
We're going to be coming every Tuesday night on Mission next week. We'll be on the road, so yeah. not able to do the show, but we'll be back in two weeks. And our guest that week will be Forrest Valkai. Am I got that right, Ooh. Jimmy? Yeah. I don't know, Valkai. something like that. That makes sense. Sounds Somebody. like sounds sounds real to me. <laughs> Somebody who can talk for four hours. Um, yeah, I love Forrest. four. He's a, he's you want to only four? <laughs> well, seven. you got to remember he's doing a show with me. So I'll be on for an hour and a half. He may take it solo after that. He'll be unconscious. <laughs> he'll just be and he'll keep going. Uh, uh, thanks for everybody yeah. supporting. And we'll close the show out again, as always, with our super Patreon supporters. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you next show. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure who was the screener tonight. Or Morgan? Um, yes, anyway. Morgan. Uh, Morgan, thank you oh. so much, brother. And uh, the moderators in the chat and all the background support. You We're guys do the hard lifting. Love you, Jimmy. <laughs>